Good morning. Trajectory from A to B to C. C is spelled S E E. How one tiny action now can lead to multiple massive actions later. Or how one present action can lead to future action. Not as good. Hey, it's Sunday morning. I want, here's an example of trajectory. Yesterday, I won the division contest for international English speech in Toastmasters. This means I will be one of a small group of people from the Netherlands representing, representing the country in the European championships for, this is about public speaking, by the way. So here's a quick recap or history of the trajectory as to how this happened. And I'm going to thank my friend Susan de Vriend for this. She, it must have been almost a year and a half ago now, she kind of dragged me into this taster class for improv comedy. I didn't really know what improv comedy was, but I trust her, which is an important element in this process. I trust her, and I knew it was for the better good, like the good of her, the good of me, the good of us. And... I went for it. I accepted her offer. I agreed to her suggestion and I did the the little taster class. A taster class, by the way, is a, I think it was like two or three hour class. Just a one thing, little taster, no strings attached, no signups for contracts, you know, no eight week class, just one little thing. It's a taster class. And in fact, I'll get back to this later, but how this taster class was the trajectory altering factor that has now a year and a half later I think contributed to me winning division yesterday in the Netherlands let's look back how did this happen I've been in Toastmasters for I don't know four or five years now and honestly this kind of pains me to say but it's just honest and I can explain why but I have not gone very far in the contests of Toastmasters. Now, if you don't know Toastmasters, it's a public speaking organization. It's worldwide. There are literally tens of thousands of organizations or, or chapters around the world. It's very structured, rigid, kind of corporate or even governmentally, uh, governmentally, <laughs> Uh, organized. It's just, it's not me. It's not my cup of tea, right? However, that structure has helped me. So the, I think, because I've analyzed this quite a bit together with Toastmasters friends and colleagues, I think I don't win usually with contests because to put it bluntly, like I don't follow the rules so well. <laughs> and it's true. I'm not such a rule follower. I like knowing the rules and then I like breaking them. I mean, very much like my books, right? Like I I know I could sell more books with more clear titles, and yet I don't do it because I'm stubborn and I'm passionate and I like titles that are witty and clever and whatnot. So Toastmasters, I started several years ago, and uh, it's been awesome. I, I love it. Also, Toastmasters is all about leadership and volunteering and playing a leadership role. And I've been uh, president of Utrecht Toastmasters twice, which is a, a city here in the Netherlands. And thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly learned you know, how to run an organization, how to run a volunteer organization, which is frankly even harder. And you know, also one of the elements I really found that I extremely enjoyed was the role of MC, or sometimes they call it Toastmaster of the Evening, but also as the role of president. I am welcoming the guests, I'm opening the evening, I'm sort of setting the stage, I'm measuring the energy and usually bringing it up. And that's one of my roles, which I just realized I loved. So this is where improv came in and helped me then, even though improv is all about no structure, improv is about skills. Improv is about adapting to an altering fluid situation 
And that's exactly what being an MC is. You don't know what's going on. You don't have necessarily a script or a plan. You're just doing your thing, welcoming the group and getting the show started, so to speak. So then the Toastmasters was going great, but I kept, I wasn't winning contests. And part of me is not a competitive guy. And part of me just likes to crank out books and stuff, but Another kind of kind of secret or part of me is pretty competitive, and I I like to win. I mean, who doesn't? I wasn't winning, and with improv, so then there was a combination of improv, and then I did a stand up comedy class, and that I basically only did it because the improv class was like on a Tuesday, and I couldn't do Tuesdays because I have basketball practice, so I wanted to do Mondays. So I just I'm like, okay, I'll do stand up, whatever that is. I don't know. And I did it, and wow, that was different. That is all about scripting and writing down and rehearsing and practicing and getting to know it by heart and doing it over and over and over. I'm like, wow, that's totally not me. But I should say, and the experience really helped me. Back to trajectory. So this word, the reason I'm talking about this today is the reason I'm so excited is because I currently have a program, it's called One, W-O-N, or One, O-N-E, and it's about one thing, focusing on one thing right now, that's your word for the year. For me, my word is focus. There's other ones I've had, courage, I've had authenticity, I've had energy, I've had several examples. So where this leads me is this word trajectory. Now, I don't want it to replace my word focus, but what's happened here is one thing keeps leading to another. And this is sort of a subplot here, but the fact that I'm creating, the fact that yesterday I got up at seven o'clock, I leave the house at eight o'clock. No, I left the house at 7.30 to get on a train, to go to Amsterdam, to spend 10 to four at this event. And I'm dedicated and I get up early and I do it. I do the work. And I think I won because I've done improv and stand up and it has honed my craft. Back to trajectory. None of this would have happened had I not initiated that first change in the trajectory when Susan invited me to the taster class for improv. Now, the subtitle, A to B to C, S-E-E. I so super clearly see this, a vision of a map. And we're at point A, which is our starting point. And there's point B out there somewhere. And then there is C, which is S-E-E. So if you imagine a map, like I live in the Netherlands, and let's just say Amsterdam. So imagine a gorgeous, like old-fashioned map of Am- of the Netherlands or entire Europe, right? And let's say I have a mapping tool or even I even have a piece of string or I like to think sort of like a rocket, like a change the trajectory of a rocket. So if I have a map and I have some string and I say, I want to go to uh, the south of France, I want to go to Montpellier, where I went to university. So that is pretty much like a straight shot south. So I take my little piece of string and I put uh, point A is Amsterdam and point B is Montpellier in the south of France. Great. And so my string is, you know, maybe it's kind of straight, but, you know, a little detours, whatever, but it's going to go from A to B. How, so that's, that's one, A to B. Very simple. Here's A, here's B, go from A, go to B, right? Uh, follow the string, follow the path, follow the route, follow the map. Great. Different. What if... I were to change the trajectory. So if you imagine this, if you have a pin in a piece of string and you change the trajectory, meaning you you alter the starting point ever so slightly at the beginning, you are going to massively alter the end point. So envision this with me. First, we have the string from A to B, Amsterdam Montpellier. Then we have the string, we have a new string from A to C. So let's say that C, S-E-E, is, uh, where do you want want to go? You want to go to Spain or Italy? (laughs) Take your pick. 
to pretend we want to go to Italy. My wife loves Italy. So let's say we wanted to go to Sicily. Now, Sicily is down further south and a little east. But if you take the string, I really want to make a visual of this. If I knew how to do visual graphics, I would do this. If anybody's listening knows how to do something like this, let me know. I want to, I'm going to take the string and I'm going to extend it, by the way. It's a little longer because it's further south. But the end point is now Sicily, down further south, island off of the boot of Italy. However, so you got your pin in it, and that's S-E-E-C, and we're not going to B anymore, we're going to C, because we altered the trajectory of our journey, of our path, of our route, of our plan, at the beginning, ever so slightly, And it's going to massively change where we end up. I mean, imagine, let's say you're doing a semester abroad. A semester abroad in Montpellier, France is very different from a semester abroad in Sicily, Italy, right? However, starting from Amsterdam, that very first little initial trigger point only changes minusculely. So if you can imagine now, it's like a triangle and except it's not closed over there. Like we don't, we're not going to go from Montpellier to Sicily. We're either going to go from Amsterdam to Montpellier or we're going to go from Amsterdam to Sicily. So back in Amsterdam, what is the change that needs to happen? How big is the change that needs to happen that goes not to Montpellier, but to Sicily? And that change, pretend we're a crow, like as the crow flies, or we're an airplane because the road, I mean, we'd probably actually take the A27 (laughs) heading south. Let's say, let's say we're an airplane because it's easier to visualize or a bird, a bird flying south. A bird's going to go to South France, bird's going to go to Italy. That change is tiny. Let's bring this back to real life. Let's, how does this happen? Why would somebody go to Montpellier instead of Italy? It could be here. I'll take a situation from my life, I remember I was in, I actually was in Montpellier. And when I first started there, I was at a party. I'll never forget this. I was at a party and I met some, remember I'm American. I'm at a year abroad in France. And I met some guy, some American guy at a party. I think we were both kind of drunk. And he, he basically said, he said, Hey, you're going to do this year in France. I just finished my year in France. He said, the classes, they're all in French, of course. This is why I chose the path I went on because I wanted to do, I wanted to be classes with the French people and not with like a bubble of Americans. So there were some Americans, but we were on this different program. So this guy says, hey, you're, you're probably going to take, you're thinking of taking an easy load of classes because you think it's going to be difficult. Yes, true. It will be difficult. However, take more classes than you think you can do because when you go back to the States, depending on your university, I went through it. This is a totally different story, but I unenrolled from my UC, my University of California school, and I enrolled Here's a little tidbit, a little tidbit trivia about Bradley Charbonneau here. I unenrolled. This was kind of dangerous. They warned me. They're like, dude, I don't think they said dude, dude, get if you unenroll from UC school, you might not get back in. You kind of have to reapply or something. I'm like, whatever, I'm fine. And I enrolled in Western Kentucky University. All right? <laughs> I, I honestly, I'm no offense to Kentuckians, but I don't know where Western Kentucky is. I'm not even sure. Is that a state or is that just like the Western part of Kentucky? See how clueless I am? I don't even know. So I'm at a party and some guy who I think he had done Western Kentucky program because they had a fantastic program to France where you actually were with French students, right? And so he says, take more classes in France, in, in whatever. And I took Latin. I took Latin and economics. I remember it was super hard. And because when you go back through the American system, they're going to kind of be easier on your grades. And so all you have to do, just make sure you pass and you will have lots of credits towards your graduation, right? So I'm getting this like insider information here, which I absolutely executed and did amazingly. 
and I did. I did. I took some classes. They were really hard. Like I remember economics it was super difficult in French, right? And my French was not that good then. And but what happened? Some guy, drunk at a party, is talking to me, not sober myself, tells me about one thing he did that changed the trajectory of his year in Montpellier. And he tells me this piece of information and it changed the trajectory of my year in Montpellier. And sure enough, I went back to the States through my Western Kentucky program. I actually, I managed to re-enroll in the UC system. And basically they said, and this is kind of another tidbit of trivia for Bradley Charbonneau here, not that you asked, but anyway, it's, it actually serves well with the story. I went back to my UC school I'm talking to the counselor and they basically said, wow, Bradley, you have so many credits towards a French degree. You could be done with your French degree easily in your senior year if you'd like to. And at that point, I was a mathematics major. I was and I was working towards the math degree. But at that point, I was so infatuated with Europe that I, it's all I wanted to do. I just, and yeah, now I live in Europe, right? Many years later. And you know what? This is a perfect story because this is a perfect example of trajectory and how one tiny action, some random guy, I wish I knew his name because I would thank him to heaven, told me, Take more classes, you'll get more credits, just do it, believe me, and pass me another beer, and your senior year will be easier. Not to mention, like, I don't know, save you money, graduate earlier, which I did, thanks to, in part, thanks to this guy at the party in Montpellier. Wow. So that was a little bit of a tangent, but not really. It's like tangent, not tangent, sorry, not sorry. Why? Because this one tiny action had massive implications for my future. I went back to California, went back to my UC school. I graduated quickly. I graduated with a French degree, not mathematics, because at that point I was so infatuated with Europe. I just wanted to go to Europe. I basically said to the university counselor, how do I get back to Europe? And I said, well, a French degree will probably help, which it didn't. But I didn't care. I just, uh, then the day after, I remember this, a day after university, I moved to, shocker, Germany. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't care where I was going. And that's where I could get a job. So I, like a practicum, a stage, I don't even know what you call that, internship, that's the word, an internship in Germany, which I arranged through another school. I remember, I I remember these names, Foothill College. So, I am sidetracking and going down memory lane. However, this is exactly relevant to my point. My point being, look at that tiny little action that massively changed my life. Literally, literally changed my life. I graduated on time. I moved to Europe, partly thanks to some guy at a party who told me to take more classes than I think I should. There we go. There you have it. How is this relevant today? How does this help you? What tiny action can you do today that will potentially... Remember, no guarantees here, right? I mean, the map thing, A to B and A to C, that seems really straightforward. And it is. And this can be straightforward. And let me add this. If you do not change your trajectory and you just go from A to B and you set out on your path and you go, you're at A and you go to B, that's great. That's fine. And if if B is your destination, fantastic. But if you would like to see, S-E-E, other opportunities or see what's going to happen, you know what we could say? Here we go. I'm going to alter this. And this is exactly why I'm doing this, by the way. It is Sunday morning. It is super early. The sun is coming up. I am on fire with energy and ideas and creativity and confidence and courage and clarity. Note those words, clarity, courage, and confidence. They're always, or almost always, the sections of my books, Clarity, Courage, and Confidence. And I have all three this morning in throws because I am creating. And so I am in creating shape. I got up in front of a big audience yesterday and I won the competition because I've been practicing. 
because I took improv class thanks to Susan, because it led to stand-up class, because that led to understanding Toastmasters better and becoming a better public speaker. And I won the contest, and I'm going to the European Championships. Boom, chicka, boom. A to B to C. What if we altered, and what if we said, A to B, you do go to Montpellier, and then you go to Sicily. Like That could be... I So... The reason I'm recording this this morning, I need to see how much time I'm using. Oh, wow. I'm at 20 minutes. That's fine. For me, this is extremely important. Here's a a sort of administrative operational note. If you're seriously still listening, I love you. Um, This book, Trajectory, I have been searching for what they call in marketing a freebie or a giveaway or a lead magnet or a book magnet or whatever you want to call it. I've been looking for something for a while as what that should be. And this morning I found it. And that book is called Trajectory from A to B to C. And it's something like a subtitle, how one tiny little change in your trajectory today can alter your future something or other right got to work on the subtitle clearly and that's it and that's going to be my freebie and this is not going to be the audiobook but i will then create an audiobook based on that and i will make it only available at least this is my plan right now i want to make it only available if you sign up for my newsletter because i need the sign ups for my newsletter to get people into my world because that's totally marketing stuff. Okay, that was a little operational and marketing e there, but that's that's one of the things I'm doing these days. And why? Because I'm focused. Why am I what am I focused on? I am you know what I'm focused on this year? <laughs> I am focused on helping you. Here we go. I'm helping you change your trajectory by taking a tiny action today or very soon. That will alter your future. And in my humble opinion, what is that trajectory? I highly recommend a book I have called One, W-O-N. Look it up. Or you can go straight to the course at U, like the letter U, U U.Repossible.com slash P slash One, W-O-N. That's it. That's what I wanted to get off my chest this morning. I am a fireball of energy this morning. It is, I don't know, six something. Pepper's over here kind of snoozing. And wow. If you're still listening, thank you for thank you for listening. I hope this has helped you with trajectory. And if you can see how this can help you in the future, let me know. And if you would like to take action come take my one course. Here's a little secret. Although it's not very much a secret if you buy the book. If you buy the book for two euros and 99 cents, it's currently only on Amazon. It's W-O-N. Find my name and find me. It's there. In in the book, I think it's chapter 32, there's a link and a a coupon code for 100% off the program. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you step by step hand-holding you through the entire process of writing this one-word book. And the book, it has 12 elements to it, and one of them is the chapter, you'll see. But there are other elements. So a student just finished, and her entire book was like 12 pages. So I want to get that out there. That Remember, this tiny little action, doesn't it, it should be tiny. Remember, that, that whole thing for me was I met a guy at a party, and he told me to take more classes. That's it. Changed the trajectory of my life. I would like to change the trajectory, it's a hard word to say, trajectory of your life, if you want to. I don't want to change it if you don't want to. I did a two-year MBA program, I always say this, I did a two-year international MBA program, and I learned one thing from Professor Giorgio Interelli from Business Organizational Psychology, and he said, and it wasn't his quote, but he said it, I heard it from him first, you can Bring the horses to water, but you can't make them drink. I can offer you a book and and an action plan and how to write your first book and one word book and all that stuff. I can bring it all to you, but I can't make you do it. And I shouldn't want to. That should be your desire. You 
need to want to change the trajectory of your life. I keep offering my teenage boy stuff and they're like, thanks, dad. But they don't want it. They need to want it. I can't, you can't shove things down people's throats and have them want it. They need to want it first. That's the most important thing, really. Okay, this, I knew this was going to be long, but this is Sunday morning. This is a massive thing for me. I'm super excited about it. And look how the trajectory grows. Like, I just went from Amsterdam to Montpellier to Sicily to Egypt. Check the map. It's like kind of on the way. And how? Because I changed the trajectory in the beginning. That guy at the party told me to take more classes. It led to me graduating university on time, moving to Germany, getting a job, learning German, eventually going to an MBA program in the Netherlands, getting the right jobs, opening the right businesses. I mean, right, who knows what right is. The ones that led me down the path. And now I live happily in Europe again. I love it. And did, was it a factor that that guy at the party told me something? Yep. I would love to be that guy at that party for your life if you are looking for it, if you want the advice, if you want the tip, if you want the push, if you want the action or the pull, or if you want to come along with me because I am on a never-ending pathway that's always changing. And I was going to say I love every minute of it. I don't love every minute of every minute of it. It is often chaotic and unknown, but embrace the unknown and be open to it and let it come and have fun with it. It's a game. Love playing the game. Life is a game. That's my deep quote for the morning. If if life is a game, (laughs) I don't know where the rule book is, (laughs) but I love playing it. Come play the game with me. That's it. All right. I'm I'm wrapping up. If you have listened to this, um, I don't know. You know what? Let's make a coupon. If you've listened to this, <laughs> here we go. If you, what, I need to, what is the time here? Wow, I think I'm at 27 minutes. If you have listened to this, first of all, you are awesome. And if you have listened to this, I can almost guarantee that something has shifted in you in the past 20 plus minutes and there has been a trajectory shift maybe that's a good title a trajectory shift in your life and that this will motivate you to take action and i highly can i can highly recommend i know i'm pimping my own stuff here my own book one if it's still called one by the time you read this so let's make a coupon code for you I'm not going to say trajectory. Let's say, um, let's say Egypt, because then I'm going to know exactly. You listened to this, and Egypt will get you a hundred percent off the course. That honestly, I'm early 2024 here. I think this is going to be one of my core offerings, one of my core, awesome, fantastic, get it done, power moves. That's going to change people's lives. So coupon code EGYPT at u.repossible.com slash P slash W-O-N. That's it. All right. Signing off for Sunday morning. It is raining outside. It is not, I was going to say dark and gloomy. It's not. It's kind of light. So I'm going to go walk with Pepper. And I hope you have a great day. And I hope that I have altered, maybe shifted your trajectory for your future so that this tiny change will result in a big change down the road. That's my hope for you, and I will happily help you along that path. Have a great day. Talk soon. Bye for now.